Welcome back to Pressing Issues on VCPR. That's Vice City Public Radio. Radio which gives the public exactly what they want. High quality educational programming about serious topics and the consistent reminder that the world is going to hell in a handbasket if you don't give us money. Remember, Vice City Public Radio is commercial free because it is funded entirely by donations from our listeners and corporate sponsors. So if you're enjoying the show, why not make a contribution? I'm Maurice Chavez, and this is Pressing Issues. Pressing Issues is a roundtable discussion group in which we ask self-important people exactly what they think about things, and then they argue amongst themselves for it, before leaving with views more extreme than when they came in. Only joking, ladies and gentlemen. This is a show founded on the ancient Greek principle of enlightened debate and the American principle of free speech. Or is that the ancient Greek principle of feeding wise men hemlock and the American principle of being annoyed and loud so nobody can get a word in? I forget. Only time will tell. Now, the subject we are discussing right now and pressing issues with me, Maurice Chavez, for your enlightenment and enjoyment is a very serious one. Public safety. In case you haven't noticed, my city is not a very safe place. These are troubled times. We are a troubled people. Some would say we are a people at war with ourselves. Others would say we are at war with reality. Those who live in other countries and strive to own our fast food restaurants and quickie marts would say we are a bloodthirsty bunch of crazies who let children buy guns from the supermarkets. Another opinion is that it is the fault of society that, as Plato said, people don't mean to kill each other. It happens because they are poor or desperate or really thirsty or in need of a vacation or something. Another view is that we are all a little confused and really should stay at home, lock the doors and forget about everything as quickly as possible. So, let's press the issue, eh? Sitting on our panel right now, we have three divergent opinions, three separate islands of insanity and a rolling sea of stupidity, three wise men following very different stars. To my right, to everyone's right in fact, we have Congressman Alex Schrupp, the youngest state congressman ever to be elected by Vice City, and now a respected man in the capital. Mr. Shrub got elected because he has great hair and says things that make you nod your head. His campaign appealed to the wealthy because he set all of us at ease by finally confirming it's okay to be rich as long as you say you care about the children. Mr. Shrub, welcome. That's not entirely true, Maurice. My campaign also appealed to the poor. Who are too stupid to understand what I'm saying, so I held up pretty pictures and I gave out candy bars to appeal to their most base instincts. But thanks, Maurice. I'm glad to be given this opportunity to set the record straight. I haven't given you any opportunity yet, my heartless friend. Let me introduce my other guest first. I hope this isn't going to get personal. I love Vice City more than anyone, and I can prove it. Yes, that's coming from the man who got elected by calling his opponent a buffalo butt and a fat hen-pecked wimp that couldn't fight his way out of a wet paper bag. Anyway, our next guest is from the opposite end of the political spectrum. A man so wet, he looks like he just stepped out of the shower. Peace Corps activist, hippie concert taper, founder of the group Speaking for the Underdog. He is fluent in seven languages and studied the harp in Peru, Callum Grayshaw. Hi, Maurice. Hola. Buenos dias and noches, bonjour and buongiorno, welcome in, hello, hello, hi. Hey, hey, let's stick to English. Most of us struggle enough with that. Welcome to Pressing Issues. And lastly, we have a man with a novel solution to the problems of public safety in Vice City. A solution so stupid, I cannot bring myself to explain it for him. Yet like breakdancing, it is sadly catching on. A man who appears on this fine show because our previous know-it-all panelist was carjacked and is now at home arming himself to the teeth. I give you John F. Hickory. How y'all doing? Indeed. So, before we get started, gentlemen, let me remind you of the rules of engagement. Here on Pressing Issues, the number one rated show on public radio in the Vice City area and hosted by me, Maurice Chavez, Pressing Issues is about free speech, not feeding each other hemlock, literally or metaphorically. Hey, my daddy used to grow that stuff in the backwoods of Missouri. Hey, well, I tell you what. Yes, thank you. I expect you to listen to each other, and I will only step in when necessary so people on the air don't forget what my voice sounds like. <laughs> so, I want a clean fight. Nothing below the belt or in the chops. And remember Maurice's motto, 
which a very wise man, my father, once told me. If you listen, one day you might be hurt, and when in doubt, use the smell test. That's so important, I think, don't you? So, Congressman, let's start with you. Crime is up, people are scared to walk the streets, nobody is taking public transportation, police morale is at an all-time low, everyone is killing and maiming and giving each other the finger, metaphorically speaking. Do you think the government is doing a good job? Absolutely. Those statistics are interesting, but like all statistics, they are also irrelevant. Let me give you a better statistic, Chavez. In 1980, when I was elected, you were, according to the intelligence gathered on you, a man with no mission. You worked as a clown at birthday parties, corporate functions, bar mitzvahs, and go-go bars. You, realizing that you were a hollow man that can only take on the personality of others, decided to become an actor. And despite going up for 17 auditions that year, you only got work as a fluffer in a sex ed video. Your tax returns show that you earned less than $2,000. Suffering from anxiety, you attended group therapy for a year and considered getting a sex change. An idiot liberal felt sorry for you, and now you host your own radio show, write a newspaper column that lines my birdcage, you've got an ex-wife and attractive girlfriend, although she's married to your best friend, and you're on top of the world. So answer me this. Can you really say the years of living under my administration have been bad for you? Uh, uh, we are not talking about me. This is pressing issues, not pressing Maurice. Yes, excuse me, if I may, can we get to the part where we press the issue? You see, that's what's wrong with this city. Liberals just want to open the floodgates, let anyone in and make you, the ordinary, hard-working men and women, pay for the pleasure. Well, you have my permission to beat them with sticks. We won't prosecute. you would be doing us all a favor. Free love, wig out, don't work, make love in the field, and listen to rock and roll or whatever you call it. Grayshaw, I know your father. He's made a lot of money, which makes him a great person, but for every good conservative, they end up having some wacko tommy kid just back from a vacation in the Orient who wants to share. Go take that share in business to Cuba, or Canada, or somewhere. I don't have a trust fund or a rich daddy. I know what it is to be poor, to look at the world from the other side. I slept my way to the top. Ahem. If you two would stop uh, hooting and carrying on, I have a plan that will save Florida from the yellow-bellied snakes that want to slither into this great state from all places north. Oh, look. Stump-jumping Jethro is using all three of his brain cells to talk. Enough! We've just started, and you have proved yourself, Mr. Shrub, to be just as they said. I grant you, 1980 was not a high point in my career, but I never applied for a sex change. I was merely in an exploratory phase, and besides which, Saul the Wheat Free Clown was a funny act. Once voted best up and coming dietary restricted comic act in the whole of my city. I tried to take it to the Catskills, but Mount Scary Large was full. Besides, we are not talking about me, we are talking about you. Actually, if I remember correctly, you didn't win. Mary the Meat Free Mime won. In fact, under legislation I am proposing, all of you vegetarians would be kicked out of Vice City. We were given canines and bicuspids for a reason, to open packages of potato chips. Hey, don't get me wrong, I always hated that bitch. What's funny about a woman not eating a hamburger? Or miming saving a chicken from the slaughterer's hands? Or her big act, I am a milk cow, a lactating machine for your breakfast cereal? How do you think a little kitty enjoyed that on his birthday? <laughs> not very much. There were tears, not laughter. I can assure you, vegetarian performance art must be stopped. Jumping Jehoshaphat on a pogo stick. You city slickers got more issues than a newsstand. Can we talk about public safety here? I ain't got all day. What? Is there a corn on the cob eating contest you have to get to? Get some chitlins and grits in the oven? You got a date with your sister, eh? Hey, be nice, man. I just wanted to talk a little politics, and you made it all personal. Right. Let's all stop bickering, especially you, shrub. I've got my eye on you. Public confidence is at an all-time low. Nobody feels safe anymore. Just the other night, I saw a man running amok with a gun, shouting he needed to defend himself. Gun sales are up. Book sales are down. What do you think, John F. Hickory? Please, press the issue. All right, that's better. Stick into the matter at hand. Well, it's quite simple, mister. Immigration is to blame. People are flooding into our state from all over America. Trash. It's quite simple. They're bringing their high 
polluting uppity out of state ways and corrupting the place. Ruining it. That's why I and my organization propose we take Florida out of the Union. We start anew as our own country and ban people from Missouri or Kentucky or Philadelphia or any of them fancy places setting foot on our soil. You think what? <laughs> have you been snorting blocks? Have you read the Constitution? Yeah, I sure have. It talks about freedom. Freedom for Florida from the stench of people moving here to retire or go on vacation. Build your own damn theme park in your own damn state. Florida theme parks is for Florida people only. That's what I say. I mean, I don't go to Alabama to visit a theme park, so why do they come here? Mr. Hickory, your views are a little extreme. Plus, I don't believe there are theme parks in Alabama. Then they should stop coming down my way and build redneck land or whatever. Damn redneck hicks ain't got no class. My views ain't extreme, mister. They're common sense. And what a lot of people would say if they have the guts. If you keep letting people immigrate here from all over the so-called United States, guess what? Can There's no go? more room. We'll be piled on top of each other like they are in Australia. What we're going to do soon is build a river. A river of freedom. A river of hope. A river which runs from the coast to coast and cuts us off from the 47 states of wastrels and bad influencers to the north. We are going to cut Florida off from the mainland of our oppressors and float out to sea. Then, the nation of Florida will be free to start over. There'll be no long-ass lines at the log flume or the pirate ship ride when I take over. You and the kids will be able to ride the rides all day. We will have a roller coaster for each and every Florida family. You know, you're bordering on Teresa. What you are saying is a very naughty thing, and only because here on Pressing Issues do we believe so wholeheartedly in free speech are we allowing it. It's truth, my home. friend, the Get damn me. truth. And before you start, I am not a racist. I hate everybody irrelevant of other issues. But I especially hate Yankees, by which I mean anyone from Georgia or further north. Build your own theme parks. Buy your own sun. Grow your own damn mosquito-infested swamp, pal. We're gonna build ourselves a river. FBI, CI, I don't give a damn. They can't stop us. You shrub. You yellow belly tie wearing bribe taking hypocrite. What have you done for Vice City up there in Washington? I've insured important tax breaks for gun retailers, real estate developers, and I've cut the cost of policing, saving the city 2% or 25 cents per household over a six year period. At the expense of society. Think of the little people. Poor people have no voice in this city. Every time I find a park to meditate in, someone brings in a bulldozer and builds condos. The madness must stop. So you suggest we just stop making babies? People need a place to park their boat and trailer and put their swimming pool. You're beginning to sound red, and by that I... 